In this video, we're going to talk about uh, some external transmission coolers to save Allison's life. So first, let me explain how the cooling system works on my Holiday Rambler. And this is pretty common for a lot of diesel pusher RVs and why I decided that I wanted to make a change. So I made a little diagram here. I didn't have any yellow dry race markers, so yellow magnet to represent the cat engine. And then I've got a couple of fluid flows here. Allison 3000 series transmission, although whatever automatic transmission is in back uh, behind the engine, it doesn't really matter. And then radiator charge air cooler. Um, down here is the factory transmission cooler, water pump, the factory oil cooler, which is attached to the block, and then the thermostat housing. So the way that the cooling setup works on this is that you have water coming out of the engine through the thermostat housing to the radiator where it gets cooled. And then after the radiator, the first stop that it makes is the transmission cooler where the freshly cooled coolant from the radiator cools the transmission fluid, which just goes back and forth to the transmission. After which it goes to the water pump, its first stop is through the oil cooler, and then it cools the rest of the engine before going through this. There's a couple of things I don't really like about this setup. The first one is that by having a heat exchanger that uses your coolant to cool your transmission, that means that if it breaks internally, you run the risk of contaminating your transmission uh, with engine coolant, which will destroy it in very short order. The other thing that I didn't like about this setup was that, or the thing that I was observing and whether or not this is how it's supposed to work versus just the system aging, was that I was finding that the transmission was getting warmer than I wanted to see, especially on hot days and long hill climbs. And same with the engine that I was having issues keeping the, the coolant temperature more or less under control. And this was even last fall uh, when the temperatures weren't necessarily very hot, but I had some steep grades out in Colorado and some of the Four Corners states. And granted, that's about, those, those states have some of the heaviest climbs that you're going to find anywhere that are the most taxing on any cooling system. But that's also the kinds of places that we like to go, so I wanted to make sure the cooling system was up for the task. The other thing is that I have a future plan of wanting to convert this to an electric fan setup instead of mechanical fan, uh, and I'll do another video on that in the future. And I wanted, I knew that part of what I was going to need to do for that to be successful was remove the transmission cooling load from this initial circuit. So here's the change I made that addresses all of these concerns. What I did was I added some external transmission coolers that I'll show you in a minute. And those I mounted underneath the RV, depending on how your RV is set up is gonna determine where you located it exactly, but where I put them was in front of the rear axle. I then ran hoses from the transmission to those transmission coolers and then I basically just plugged off the, trans the factory transmission cooler. So essentially, I've got the same cooling capacity that I had before as far as the, the coolant is concerned, but now all of that is dedicated to the oil and the engine. I've put about 4,000 miles on this. We did a trip out west. We went over the Eisenhower Pass. We went over the Teton Pass. We went over some extremely steep, high elevation, long climbs. And I'm happy to report that the transmission coolers worked flawlessly, um, at least almost flawlessly. There's no doubt that if anything, I oversized it a little bit. Um, I probably could have gotten away with using one cooler instead of the two that I used, but uh, I used two coolers more than anything because of the sizing of the ones that I got uh, for the ports. The transmission had dash 12 fittings coming out of it and the coolers had dash 10 fittings, so I didn't want to create an additional restriction not knowing how the transmission would respond. The only issue that I had is that my thermostatic switch is right here at the entrance to the transmission coolers. And so the problem with that, there's, there's two problems really. One is that um, you've got all of this line coming from the transmission to the cooler where going down the road 
uh, where you have a good amount of airflow, this can provide some level of cooling, probably not all that much, but the bigger issue is that this thermostatic switch has a whole lot of exposure to wind. And so what I found was that at highway speeds, the fans weren't kicking on until about 203 degrees. Um, and the switch I have in there is supposed to be on at 180 degrees, off at 165. So um, like you saw, I've added some insulation in there and I'm gonna add some a little bit more to try to make sure that that switch is protected. Worst case scenario is that I'm just gonna add a manual switch as well. But either way, 203 degrees is not the end of the world by any stretch. Um, maybe a little bit warmer than I'd like to see, but it's still okay for the transmission. It's sort of hard to see under here uh, and get a good angle to show you exactly what I did, but roughly speaking, and I'll, maybe I'll put a couple of pictures in here as well to make it so that you can really see what I did. I took a couple of L bracket pieces of steel and I ran them between the two frame rails. Um, on my Holiday Rambler, this whole area between the frame rails is pretty much open with the exception of the fuel tank up there propane tank behind. So this made a good spot to put them. Um, I put a third L bracket over here just because I didn't like how far these hoses were going to have to go unsupported. So this provides some extra support. Um, these I mounted horizontally and I mounted them this way intentionally because the fans suck the air down. So what that means is that they're not going to be sucking up all of the grime from the road, the dust, dirt, etc. Um, is some of it going to get in? Uh, certainly, that's that's almost uh, impossible to avoid. But I think it's probably going to keep most of it out. And we had a pretty dusty trip, and it seems like it it's done a pretty good job. Um, you see this foam insulation I have here. This I added after this last trip because the thermostatic switch is basically right at the end there. Let's see if I can get at it with the video. And I guess you can't really see it too well, but it is in there and it seemed like it was getting cooled by the airflow under the bus and that was causing the fans to come on uh, at a hotter temperature than was desired. So this is what I did and then I'll explain a little bit more uh, about how well this worked. So, do you need to do this? Well, if you like going out west, you like going on areas that have some steep grades, especially if you're pulling a toad behind you like we are and your engine's working hard. Um, I certainly think that this is useful to do. I also think that it's nice. I, I like eliminating the failure mode of separating the, the transmission fluid from the coolant entirely. Uh, so for me, it was completely worth doing. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.